the smoke in the room clear, see, and there's the dog lying there, and his hair's all standing up, and the guy says, don't look at me, it's your dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pa. Hey, you're home early. No, Peggy. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. What, a meeting break up? No, it's still going on, but I, I got tired. I'm bone tired. Do me a favor, will you? Put up my horse. Yeah, sure. Go on, have a rest. I'll be back in a minute. I got a great one. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, is my father still at the meeting? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's still there. He'll, he'll be along after a while, don't worry. Huh? Oh, I'm not worried. Little Joe and I are having a wonderful time. <laughs> he tells the best jokes oh, yeah. I've ever heard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Good night, thank you. Uh, Good night, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> Madam. Oh, hi, Pa. How'd the cattleman meeting go? Oh, all right, I guess. I left early. Something wrong? Hmm? No. I'm just tired, I guess. Uh, it's no wonder the way you've been driving yourself lately. As soon as I get some sleep, I should be all right. Matter of fact, I think I'll... Take the hay right now. to sleep a little more quietly. What was I doing? You were snoring. Oh, boy, I don't snore. Whatever it was you were doing, then, will you please stop it? I'll try, boy. Adam. If you have to play that, that thing, keep it down, please. Oh, sorry, Pa. You call me, Pa? If you have to tell stories at this time of night, tell some quiet ones! 
Shh, shh. Pa's, pa's trying to sleep. We'll, we'll be quiet, Pa. I think we better play checkers. <laughs> Oh, Hoss? I'm awake, Paul. I'm awake. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry I awakened you, son. Huh? You go back to sleep now. Get right back in the bed and go back to sleep. All right, Paul. Good night, son. Thought you'd be asleep by now. Adam, I'm sorry I asked you to stop playing that guitar. You go right ahead and play it. That's all right. I'd just soon read. No, no, you play the guitar anytime you want to. You gonna make me mad. Didn't I warn you about double jumping me? Hmm? Where's the frog? <laughs> Come on, frog! Let's get her! <laughs> oh. Um, did, did we disturb you again, Pop? Huh? No, no, you, you, you kids just keep right on enjoying yourself. Where are you going? I'm going to town. But I, I just put your horse up. Well, I'll just have to get him out again. I've just got to get a good night's rest. Oh, Pa, we... Joseph, someday you'll understand. Heard some innocent bystander here? What's it to you? Why don't you mind your own business? Well, wait a minute. What's your... going on here? Well, I don't know what beef this fellow has with the young fellow he was chasing shooting at there, but public street is no place to settle it. I agree with you, Ben. What's your problem, mister? That young squirt won all my money in a poker game, wouldn't give me a chance to get it back. What's your name, mister? Frank Shermer. Well, Mr. Shermer, I got a piece of news for you. In this town, any man can quit any game just any time he's got a money. So either you get back in there and calm yourself down, play according to our rules, or you get out of this town altogether. Shooter, thank you for stopping that shooting, Ben. Mm -hmm. Say, uh, what you doing in town this time of night? Well, you know, Roy, I just couldn't get to sleep at the house. I came into town to get a room at the hotel and get a good night's rest, and that's just what I'm going to do right now. I'll see you in the morning, Roy. All right. Good night, Ben. All right. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'd like a room for the night, please. Excellent. A comfy spot for a weary traveler. Isaiah Potts at your service, sir. Just sign here. Good evening, Mr. Potts. Mrs. Jenkins. I'll get your luggage. I haven't any. No luggage? No, well, I'll be leaving first thing in the morning. With no luggage, I'm afraid I must ask for payment in advance. Hotel rules, you know. Oh, Mr. Potts, don't be so foolish, my boy. This is Mr. Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa. So? Well, well, so it is not at all necessary to ask for money in advance. I'm afraid I can't be expected to know everyone in the territory. After all, I've only worked here a few days, you know. Well, that's all right. As I say, I'll, I'll be leaving first thing in the morning. How much is it? Uh, one dollar a night, but perhaps it won't be necessary. That's oh, all right. Now, what's uh, the room number? May I have the key, please? Uh, room number four, but there is no key. Uh, people kept walking off with them, and the management removed the locks. Just walk right in. Number four. 
Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I'm the widow Jenkins, Jenny Jenkins. And since the death of my dear husband, I live here at the hotel. Well, if there's anything at all I can do to help you, I'd be... Well, thank you very much. You're very kind. Good night. <laughs> Good night. He's, uh, rich, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, the richest, Mr. Potts, in the whole territory. And without a helpmate. Like me. Mr. Potts? Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Something wrong? Yeah, one thing. There's a fella sound asleep up at number four. Is it a dirty man in a filthy undershirt? Yeah, that would be about the description, I guess. Hamish Loy. Apparently, he's rented the room before. Now, whenever he gets drunk, he thinks he's rented it for yeah. life. Just throw him out. Throw him out? Yes. Just wake him up and tell him to get out. It's your room. You paid for it. There's no question about it. He has got to go. Now, this ain't your bed. Where are my boots? Huh? Where are my boots? Always take your boots off before you go to bed. That's manners. Yeah. Remember that, my boy. I wouldn't oh, think of God. going to bed with my boots on. No, of course you wouldn't. That ain't the cultured thing to do. All right, now let's get these boots on. Here we are. There. Now, can you think you can manage that one? Oh, Mr. Cartwright, is there anything I can do to help you? Uh, oh, uh, no, Mrs. Jenkins, I think everything is under control here. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Uh, well, if, if I can help in any way, I'd be very happy to. I, I'm sure you would. Uh, I, I, I appreciate your offer. You know, I'm just up the hall in number seven, and, and if oh. I can do anything at all, I'd well, be very grateful thank you. to help you. Thank you very much. Surely. You're very kind. Good night. Oh, good night. Good night. Oh, man. Up we get now. Come on. Who are you? Oh, come oh, on, please. You're a good man. Yeah, look, maybe, maybe, maybe Mr. Potts will be able to find a room for you. That prissy Potts. I wouldn't ask him for the right time of day. Oh, well, fine. Uh, by the way, what time is it? Bedtime. Is there anything wrong? Ma'am? <laughs> Ma'am? Good evening, Ben. Oh, hi, Doc. Yeah, are you having a little trouble with a lady friend? I, I, I got my room right here next door. Hmm. Before that. And uh, I'm trying to get some sleep. And she's, she's crying in here next door, and I haven't been able to fall oh, asleep. Oh, you bachelors. You, you... What are you men doing at my door? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> well, it... Doc. Ma'am, I've got the room next door here, and... Uh, I've been trying to fall asleep, but I've been hearing you cry this I've got a long. perfect right to cry if I want, haven't I? Oh, yes, of course you have, ma'am. I've just been trying to get some sleep here. Isn't that just like a man? You hear a woman cry, but are you concerned? No. Do you offer help? No. All you can think about is your precious sleep. I'm sorry. I... 
Is there something I can do? No. I'm sorry I kept you awake. I'll try to say that my heart breaks quietly. <laughs> so you can sleep. Well, oh, ma'am, that is the point. Ben. Ben. What? There's a cowboy in there with a bullet in his leg. Now, I need a man to hold him down while I take it out. Well, go downstairs and get Mr. Potts to hold him down. Oh, Ben Potts. He'd, he'd faint at the sight of the blood. Now, come on. I'm all right. Oh, um, uh, what was the little lady crying about? Her heart was breaking. Yeah. Oh, well, Ben, now, don't you worry. If she was talking about it, you just bruised it a little. Oh, Doc. <laughs> Ben, this is Larry Newell. Larry, this is Ben Cartwright. <laughs> You're that young fella who was dodging them bullets down the street a while back. I thought that chairman missed you. No, but he didn't hit me bad enough to keep me from getting out of there. Now, look, Mr. Cartwright's going to hold you down while I get this bullet out. I don't need anybody to hold me down. Hold him down, Ben. Yeah. Now, now this won't be bad. It isn't now. deep. <clears throat> Eh, it's all right. I got it. I got it. Here we are. Ha <laughs> That wasn't bad. That Shermer's a pretty bad character. He, you look like he only hit you in the leg. He's a bad poker loser, that's for sure. I don't win very often myself, but when I'm smart enough to win, I'm smart enough to get out with it. I need that money. My mom's got a note coming due at home. Oh, where's home? Texas, Bowie County. As soon as Doc gets through here, I'm getting me a horse heading for there. Hey. Ah, that'll hold it. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow you try to get somebody to change that for you. You understand? All right. Well, thanks, Doc. How much do I owe you? Oh, five bucks. That's for taking out the bullet and forgetting that I did. Well, that's more than fair. Well, thank you. Oh, and Ben. As for you, I think you could do with a little more rest than you've been getting. Oh, Doc, I'm going to get some rest right now. Sure. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. You get some rest, too, young fella. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, would you do me just one more favor? Well, not if it's going to cost me any more sleep, I won't. Well, I just want you to hold my wallet for me while I get that horse. Then, if Shimer comes after me, you could send it to my ma and... Address is right here in the wallet. Well, I, I... I just take out enough money for the horse, okay? Yeah, all right. I better get go and get that horse. Oh, yeah, I hope you. Sure do appreciate all you're doing for me, Mr. Cartwright. You get yourself a good horse now. Bye. Whew. in here? Wilfred! Well, what's going on in here? What's this joker doing in the room? Well, he's a perfect stranger. Stranger? In, in your room in the middle of the night? He's got in the wrong room here. How dare you insinuate! <gasps> oh, Wilfred Sims, now look what you've got to do! What I've done? Oh, yes. Just wait till that barman opens his eyes and oh. then I'll show you oh, how I'm going to do that wife stealer. These are for you. Oh, 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 stop it! Here! Oh, oh Mr. Help me. Cartwright! Oh! How could you do this to Mr. Ben Cartwright? Well, ma'am, I don't give a shucks who he is. He can't go wandering around my wife's room. I am not your wife. Oh, now, Lucy, oh, be you reasonable. Oh, poor man. Man, are you feeling better? What happened? Well, these barbarians here attacked you. Who are you calling barbarians? Yeah, yeah, what do you mean by that? Obviously, these two are in collusion. We are? Yeah, but I assume that the actual barbaric attack was performed by that one. Don't call my husband names. Uh, Lucy, yeah, some you called me your husband. I did not. You did, too, didn't she? You, you called me your husband. Uh, please, everybody, I, I... The whole thing is a mistake caused by my excessive drowsiness. I apologize to the young couple. I think I'll go back to sleep. 
Oh, uh, if you want to file charges in the morning, I'll be very happy to testify. Very kind. Oh, and by the way, the relationship here bears investigation. Get out! Will! I've had enough of your insults. Now get out! Why, how dare you talk to me that Ladies, way? Ladies, I want to thank you very much for, for everything that you've done for me. Oh. Now, Mr. Cartwright, now, if you should have any more trouble... I know, I'll call you, Mrs. Now, Jenkins. You, you'll Thank be you sure very much. You do that. Good night. Oh, oh Mr. Cartwright. Sorry, Mrs. Jenkins. Uh, I want to apologize again, and I think I'll be able to find the right room this time. Just a minute. You too, Wilfred. Out. Oh, now, Lucy. Go, or I will call upon this gentleman to protect me. But you're my wife. I am not your wife. He lured me into a false marriage. I did not. I didn't know the preacher was a fake. Then you should have found out. You're still my wife. Protect me from this man! Look, I, I, I just don't understand what either one of you is talking about. It, it's very simple. Back in Kansas, he persuaded me to run away with him and get married and come to California. But on the way out, I found out that the preacher who married us wasn't a preacher at all. Because you was flirting with that fancy dude on the stage, and he told you so. He was not a fancy dude, and I was not flirting, and he knew the truth. Knew the preacher's name. Said he'd call himself anything. Preacher, judge, doctor, anything just to make a dishonest dollar. Wait a minute. Look, we, we, we got a preacher here. He's an honest-to-goodness honest minister. Why don't we all... Get some sleep tonight, and then tomorrow you can go to the minister and get yourself married all over again. Never. If I marry again, it won't be to someone so dumb he picks a fake preacher, but to someone with brains in his head and <laughs> romance in his soul. Well, like that, that, like that fancy dude? Maybe. But tomorrow I'm taking the first stage back to Kansas. Now get out! Women, how are we ever going to figure them? Well, we never do completely. Hey, why don't you try some of that romance she mentioned? Romance? Yeah. Worked before, didn't it? Might work again. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. You've changed. You ain't as nice as you was. Yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? Zaya Potts at your service. All right, just answer some questions. I'm looking for a punk kid from Texas. Is he staying here? The name, please? I don't know his name. But he's blonde and skinny and was wearing a checked shirt. Oh, I'm not sure that that description fits any of our guests. Uh, what was it you wanted of him, sir? I want to invite him to a poker game. Oh, well, that sounds like a pleasant diversion. But at this late hour, all of our guests are asleep. Why don't you try the saloon? Room six, Larry Newell from Texas. Now, why didn't you say so in the first place? Oh, Mr. Newell. Yes, Mr. Potts. There's a man looking for you to invite you to a poker game. He's a mean-looking man with a gray hat. He went up to your room to look for you. That must be him coming back now. Well, look, don't tell him he saw me, and I'll make it worth your while. You will? Real worth your while. Thank you, sir.
He ain't there. Oh. Well, perhaps he went out while I was dozing. This night work is very tiring, you know? Any idea where he might be? I'm a hotel clerk, not the social editor of the paper. Any more smart words out of you, and I'm going to shove them right down your throat. Now, answer the question. I don't know. Honest. Anybody else been looking for him? The, the doctor. He sent for the doctor to tend a wound. So I plugged him, huh? That's good. Anybody else? Mr. Cartwright, a guest. I heard the doctor call upon him for his assistance. Where is this Cartwright? Oh, well, you can't disturb him. He's, he's a very tired man, Mr. Cartwright, and... Room number four. Hey, Mr. Busybody. Come on, get up. I want to talk to you. You wake up like that all the time? And what do you want? Where's that Newell kid? Who? That kid I winged for cheating me out of my money. I don't know where he is. And if I did know, I probably wouldn't tell you anyway. So why don't you just get out of here and let me go back to sleep, will you? I got a feeling he'll be back. And I'm waiting for him. Well, here you're not. I paid for this room. And I'm going to get some sleep. Now, will you please get out? Well. Shut the door, will you? Mr. Potts. Well, did you see Mr. Cartwright? Yeah, I saw him. Now I want to see Larry Newell. Give me a room near his. We're full up. Well, in that case, I'll just have to wait in his room. Really? This is most unorthodox. And without permission, I have no authority to allow anyone to visit a guest's room. When he comes back, uh, you won't tell him I'm waiting, now will you? Trying to court you romantic like. I mean, that's what you want, ain't it, Lucy? Romantic? Caterwauling around the hotel this time of night? Why, you've gone and wakened this nice man again. Yes, you certainly have. And a busy man like Mr. Cartwright needs his oh, no, rest. No, 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 Mrs. Jenkins. Let, well, let, let me well, handle I'm this. I'm only trying to help, Mr. Cartwright. I know you are, and, and, and Mrs. Jenkins, if, if, why don't you go back to your room and give well, yourself I... a good night's rest? And I do appreciate the interest that you've been Well, taking. that's perfectly all right now. And if I can be of any help, well, you, you call thank me. Thank you very much. Of course I will. I'm afraid that, uh, that Wilfred's... Uh, romantic tactics are as a result of a little talk that we had, Mrs. Sims. I am not Mrs. Sims. Well, I, oh, I, I, call I me know. Lucy. I declare, I don't know whether I'm Miss or Mrs. Well, Lucy, what what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to make the point that it's, he's trying to win back your affections the way he won them not too long ago. Yeah, and that ain't easy without repeating yourself. Well, I don't consider waking everybody up with your yell in any way to win a girl. I think it's about time that you two started 
listening to the facts instead of your emotions. What facts? Well, one of the facts is that this young lady is going back to Kansas on the stage tomorrow. Isn't that right? Now, the trouble with you two is that you've been suffering growing pains. And you'd be suffering those even if you were married. And the best way to get rid of them is to talk about them. Now, it still isn't too late tonight. The moon's still shining bright. You can go outside and walk and talk. And after you've talked it all out, then you can decide whether you go to your separate ways or whether you go to see a preacher in the morning. How about it, Lucy? Well, I guess a walk can't hurt a girl. I'll get my coat. Oh, oh I, sh I sure do thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Look, Wilbur, do me a favor. Don't argue with her. <gasps> Save that little pleasure for after you're married. Room number six. Oh, I'm sure I don't know, sir. Look, Potts, I'm tired. Too tired to play games. Who is it? We didn't exchange amenities. He just said he wished to play poker with Mr. Newell. Shermer. Is that his name? We could certainly take some lessons in manners. Now listen, I want you to get Sheriff Coffee. What? Go get Sheriff Coffee. Tell him I want to see him up in my room. But I can't leave here with the safe open and all. Lock the safe. Now get him. And they told me to come west. Mr. Potts, where's that Shermer? I've been waiting outside and he ain't come out yet. What about that worthwhile talk of yours? Well, I gotta get upstairs first and get my wallet. Now, how about Shermer? Yes, that's a mean man, all right. He sure is, and he's trigger happy, too. He's the one who shot my leg. He did? He went out the back door. That's why you didn't see him. That's good. And thank you a lot, Mr. Potts. Globe Hotel. Oh, Sheriff, the management will have my scalp for this. They'll blackball me all over the country. Right. I hope you realize right. just exactly what this is right. going to... Will you please shut up and pull yourself together? Now, did you get the doctor? Of course. He'll be here as soon as he gets dressed. I told him we'd be needing him in his capacity of coroner. Coroner? I wish you'd stick to your knitting. That man ain't dead yet. Least ways he was still breathing when Ben and I carried him upstairs. No, 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 no. no. He's a goner for sure. Right there, did him in good. Oh, stop, will you? Are you accusing Ben Cartwright here of killing Shermer? Well, they were the only two fighting, weren't they? Ben. Ben. Hmm? Did you hear? Hmm? Potts here is accusing you of sticking a knife in Shermer. Oh. Well, that's, that's ridiculous. I didn't stick a knife in anybody. Who did that? Shut up, will you? Now, I'll do the investigating around here. Ben, tell me exactly what happened, if you will. I had this, uh, this wallet with uh, that young Texan had me keep it for him because he was afraid that Shermer was going to try to get the money back that he'd won from Shermer in that poker game. And anyway, I knew that Shermer was, was waiting for the young fellow from Texas. Good evening, Roy. Doc. And again to you, Ben. I, what are you doing up? You won't get proper rest like that. Now go to bed. Well, where's the body? 
Potts here tells me... Potts here is going to have to learn to mind his own business. Now, the man is upstairs, he's alive, and has a knife stuck in his back. Well, for heaven's sake... And don't worry about it. He's being watched over by a very charming guest to the hotel here, Mrs. Jenkins. Oh, is that... Where is he? In room number six. (laughs) Nice woman. Ben? Ben? Come on, please. Now, let's get on to that story. Hmm? What happened? You know, you were telling me. Oh, uh, well, the uh, young young fellow, the Texas fellow, Larry, uh, he came running back and to get his wallet, and I gave him his wallet. And, you know, Shermer, he was hiding out in the young fellow's room, and he ran out of the room, started shooting at the young fellow. And I started wrestling with Shermer to stop him from shooting, and suddenly I was hanging on, and suddenly he went limp. There was a knife in his back. That's right. Shut up. It's Larry. What happened to him? Oh, oh yeah. Well, he, uh, he was just skedaddled. Oh, well, then I better get a deputy on him right now. We're going to need him. He'll never find that boy, you know. With all that money, he's, uh, he's long gone to Texas. Oh, boy. And that means that uh, I'm the only witness, Mr. Cartwright. And if that man up there dies, I think you're in serious trouble. Huh? What do you mean? Well, simply that as the only witness, I could say anything that I want to. That you stabbed Shermer with that knife, or or that that young Texan threw the knife from down here. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what you're really trying to say to me and correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, your memory is regulated by money. Oh, it's relative, my dear sir, relative. See, I'm a poor man, and, and what's, what's a lot of money to me, a poor man, is to you a rich man, a mere Mr. pittance. Potts. I could... Mr. Potts. Yes. Really, I've never been so insulted in my life. I offered to help that doctor up there, and he pushed me, literally pushed me out of the room. And what are you two chatting about? Well, we're, uh, we're chatting about a very interesting subject here, Mrs. Jenkins. Blackmail. Oh? Yes, blackmail. Mr. Potts is trying to decide whether he'd make more money out of me by being a witness for me or against me in case Mr. Shermer dies. Oh! Why, how dreadfully mercenary! Yes. Hey, Mrs. Jenkins, you're a witness. You saw the whole thing happen. Well, yes, I heard the shot, and and I came out of my room in time to see that man fall down the stairs. After the fact! After the fact! Well, as a matter of fact, now now that I think about it more clearly, I came out of my room before the shot. Uh, The sound of the scuffling and all, you know? Yeah. You know, Mrs. Jenkins, you're beginning to sound a little bit like... Mr. Potts? Well. Well, I got my boys trailing that young Texan. Ms. Jenkins, how's the patient doing? Well, I really wouldn't know. That uh, that doctor ejected me from the room. That case, we'll just have to wait for the doc. Sheriff! Potts! One of these days... I demand you arrest that man for murder. To have a murder, you got to have a corpse. Oh, how's he making out, doc? Well, he's still breathing, so he's no corpse. Hey, you made a good nurse. Doc, do you think he ought to be left alone like that? Oh, I uh, I cleaned the wound, and I gave him something to ease the pain and make him sleep. Whether that knife caused internal bleeding, I won't be able to tell for some time, so I'll, I'll have to keep an eye on him. But right now, I would love a cup of coffee. How about it? I am not the chef. Oh, there's so many things you're not. Where is the coffee? In the office. Hmm. But I'll tell you one thing I am, Mr. Cartwright. That's a witness to violence. Potential murder. Potts, be logical, will you? Even if Ben Cartwright did do it, it's obviously a case of self-defense. So that's the way it's going to be. The power of the rich against the word of the poor. The influence of the mighty. Roy, how are the beds in jail? Well, we have no complaints on him. No, I ain't gonna take that, Jasper's yeah, working. Roy, 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 Roy. Take me over to the jail. Well, you ain't confessing, are you? No, no. 
The only thing I'm confessing to is that I'm so dark tired I'm gonna fall asleep standing up. Now, will you take me to jail? Let's go. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, boy, you you were sure right about that moon and all. That's <laughs> right. I have forgiven Wilfred and consented to marry him. Well, and first thing in the morning, I'm going to wrestle that preacher right out of oh, bed. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Good night. Are you the sheriff here? That's right, ma'am. Well, then you must also be a justice of the peace. That's the way it usually is. Well, like most sheriffs, I am a justice of the peace. That's right. Wilfred, as justice of the peace, he can marry us tonight. What? what I, thought you, I thought you wanted a fancy wedding with all them doodads and stuff. <sighs> We've had the doodads. Now all we want is to get married. Will you, Sheriff? This is the middle of the night. Everybody's tired and all. Oh, but that's the whole point, Sheriff. Otherwise, we got to wait all that time until tomorrow and everything. Well, if you put it that way. Oh, a wedding? How romantic. Don't you think so, dear Mr. Cartwright? Yeah, Roy, let's go to the jail. Oh, sorry, Mr. Cartwright, you, right, you can't do that. Yeah, you're going to be our best man. He's just right. got to be here. Why, he brought us together. If it weren't for him, I might have gone back to Kansas. Please, Sheriff. Ben, it's up to you. Please, Mr. Cartwright. Well, I was in a, almost the end of it. I guess I might as well be in at the beginning of it. <laughs> All right, let's get lined up right over here. A wedding. We must have some music. All right, kids, if you... Now, look, I'm just going to say the words. Tomorrow morning, I'll sign the papers. If it's all right with you, we'll stand right over here, please. that will be just fine. Here's the ring, Mr. Cartwright. Doc, if you'll just stand right over here and give the bride away. Yeah. Well, do I have to give her away? She's cute enough to keep. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a coffee maker, either. <clears throat> all right, do you... What's your name? Oh. Sims, it sure is a pleasure to meet you, Sheriff. I don't mean that. Now get back over there. Yes, sir. No, your given names, your first names. Lucy and Wilfred. Wilfred, your hat. Do you look? Do you look? Please, Sheriff. It is sort of romantic. All right, then. Go ahead and play, but keep it down. Now, do you, Lucy, take Wilbur here? Wilfred. Do you, Lucy, take Wilfred as your lawfully wedded husband to have and to hold in sickness and health to love Vanner and obey so long as you shall both live? I do. Now, do you, William? Wilfred. Do you, Wilfred? Take Lucy here as your lawfully wedded wife. Oh, I do. Not now. Do you, Wilfred, take Lucy here as your lawfully wedded wife to have and to hold in sickness and the house to cherish and protect so long as you both shall live? Now, Wilfred. What? I do. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. <sighs> All right, now's the time when the best man is supposed to give you the ring. Ben, the ring. Ben. Ben, I'm sorry. Ben, the ring. Hmm? You need the ring for the wedding. Oh, here, 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 here. here. OK. Here you are, son. Oh, thank you, sir. For you, Lucy. No, no, no. When he tells you, you put it on her finger. Oh, hey, um, when do I give her away? Now is as good a time as any. Well, honey, up so easy. <clears throat> By the powers vested in me, I now pronounce. Come right in, boy. Stand right there. Sheriff, here's your man. Yeah. Where'd you find him? Just out of town, headed back. Did he just say that you were headed back this way? Yeah. I got to thinking. I shouldn't have thrown that knife and just run like I did. You throwed that knife? Well, sure. He was shooting at me, and it's the only thing I had to protect myself with. Well, Doc, how is he? Oh, Sherman's gonna live. Don't you worry about that. Sherman's all right. I don't know about me. They were starting to accuse me of throwing that knife. Well, Sheriff, that's foolish. Mr. Potts here, he saw me throw it. Potts! 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 
Lots. There has got to be more than a dozen things in the books that I can charge you with. Now, here, Bill, take this weasel over to the jail and lock him up. All right, Roy. Come on, Potts. And they told me to come west. Son, I... I don't know what to do with you. He threw that knife in self-defense. I can testify to that. Sure. All right, son, you can go. You mean I'm free? Yeah, and get that bandage changed. Yeah. Well, thank you, Doc, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> there you go. Goodbye, there there you go. go. <laughs> Off you go. Be careful now. <laughs> Roy, this time I'm getting some sleep for sure. Amen. This time you do it, or you're going to become a patient. I'll do it this time. Mm. Uh, good night, all. Good, good night. night. Good night. Sheriff, just a minute. Are we married or not? Ben, where'd I leave off, you know? Uh, can you remember? Uh, um, you left off right after I gave her away. All right, by virtue of the powers vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife good night. You can kiss the bride now, William. The oh, don't you just love weddings, Mr. Cartwright? Good night, patient. Good night, Mrs. Jenkins. be ready to go. It's getting late. It's gonna be past midnight by the time we get home. Just a minute, Joe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean up with this one. Are you kidding? You haven't got a chance of... Come on now. Come on, Joe. I'll see you out in the muck for Young man? Hmm? Young man. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. Does this wagon belong to you? Yeah, this is my wagon. Then could I persuade you to drive me to Carson City? Carson City is a pretty long way this late at night. I'd pay you well, anything you ask, but it's vital that I leave at once. 
Yeah, well, I, I'd sure like to help you, ma'am. See, I've got a brother over there in a saloon, and he's... You don't understand how desperately I need to get away. It's... Hey, look, is somebody bought... Two beers. <laughs> hey, don't tell me. You, you didn't draw to an inside straight. Yep. You gotta take chances, little Joe, like Charles Augustus Hackett taught me. Yep. A little lesson I learned. You gotta take a chance, Joe. Who? Oh? <laughs> Charles Augustus Hackett, the richest man in the world. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's in town, you know. He bought that old Simmons mine that everybody thought was petered out. Mm -hmm. And in two weeks, they done found the main vein again, and he done made another big fortune. Yep. If you want to be rich, Joe, you got to take chances like me and Mr. Hackett. <laughs> Is that right? Yep, that's it. Well, you know something? I think I'm going to take a chance. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to let you drive home, and I'm going to take a chance that you won't drive off the road while I'm asleep. Fine. Yep. <clears throat> it's so nice to be rich. Get up there. Right? Yes. My name is Hackett, Charles Augustus Hackett. <laughs> yes, I know, Mr. Hackett. Oh? Well, I've seen your photos in San Francisco newspapers, and of course I knew you were in town. Well, I'm inspecting a little mine operation I have around here. Oh, forgive me. My wife, Maria? How are you? Hello. My friend and associate, Mr. Carl Davis. How do you do? Davis. Uh, my son, Joseph. And my uh, other two sons, Adam and Hoss. I hear you have a mountain range of timberland. Well, you know, I'm always in the market for lumber. Maybe we can uh, discuss a little deal. Well, actually, we, we haven't any lumber to sell, but uh, we can have some coffee. Won't you come in? Ah, splendid. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid this business will bore you, my dear. Maybe you could take a little uh, ride around the ranch? Yes, that would be lovely. Perhaps you could show me some of the more scenic spots. It'd be my pleasure. Yes, well... Don't take too long. This shouldn't take longer than a half hour. said it's my favorite spot you know it would frighten me if it were mine I'd love it so much I'd be afraid of losing it oh there's not much chance of anybody sticking all that in their back pocket you're lucky being so secure me what about you married to a man like Charles Augustus Hackett how much more security can you get 
You must have everything you want. I have everything I need. Mrs. Hackett, aren't you the woman who asked me to drive her to Carson City the other night? I wish you'd forget that. Well, I was just curious. Please. It's forgotten. Well, I guess we'd better ride back. Charles will be waiting. <coughs> My cook's in town. I guess that's not very good coffee, oh, no. is it? <laughs> I gotta apologize for that. Mr. Davis is a little luckier being outside looking at the livestock. <laughs> yes, Mr. Cartwright, I've been inquiring all over town about you. Oh? Yes, sir, and the more I hear and see about this Ponderosa, the more I like it. Well, that's praise from Caesar. And now about that timber. Oh, Mr. Hackett, I... I haven't any lumber for sale. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, everything is for sale. Just name your price. Well, you see, we had a uh, big fire up on that mountain about 15 years ago, and that's all reseeded timber, and I'm afraid it isn't ready for cutting yet. Well, why don't you let me be the judge of that? I've already judged it. Then you really don't want to sell, do you? <clears throat> How long have you had that bull? Well, let's see. It's been about three years, hasn't it, Adam? Yeah. Paul sent all the way to Texas for him. It's a magnificent beast. Mr. Cartwright, the finest livestock I've ever seen. Well, thank you. I said a half hour. It's been 40 minutes. I'm sorry, Charles, but this scenery is so beautiful. Mr. Cartwright, I've never seen anything as lovely as this Ponderosa. You're very kind. You really like it that much, my dear? Oh, yes. I wish we could have a place like this. Well, if you're that impressed with it, perhaps we shall, my dear. Now we must get back into town. Thank you very much for your hospitality, Mr. Cartwright. Well, you're more than welcome. Uh, if you come again next time, uh, I'll have better coffee for you. <laughs> that at least is a deal. Cartwright boy, we're gone a long time. What were you talking about? We were talking about the Ponderosa. Oh. Do you really mean what you said about liking it so much? Of course I meant it. Why would I lie? Now, why are you snapping at me? Especially when I'm about to do something for you. Now, how would you like to own this Ponderosa you admire so much? You must be joking, Charles. Why? You said we should have a place like that? You build Ponderosas. With work and love and pride. You don't just buy them. Well, I can. Besides, why build one when there's that place out there just ready and waiting? Charles, you don't understand. I don't want the Ponderosa. Well, I do. Besides, the situation intrigues me. This, uh, this Cartwright, very stubborn man. And I want to see just how stubborn. Charles, please, leave the Cartwrights alone. You saw them out there. They're a happy, contented, loving family. Go tell the room clerk who'll be staying a few more days. Charles, I agree with Maria. What use would the Ponderosa be to you? Your headquarters are in San Francisco. I don't pay you for your opinions. I pay you to do as you're told. Now go do it. Now you're all upset. Well, that's too bad. What are you going to do, run away again? <laughs> you're so stupid, my dear. Where in the whole world would you hide from the men that I would hire to go and get you?
Ist alles ohne? Well, good morning. Hello. Beautiful morning. Yes. You know, I woke up this morning and I said to myself, I've got to take one more look at the Ponderosa. <laughs> Help yourself. Yes, sir. The more I look at this place, the more impressed I am. You know something, Cartwright? What? If I owned the Ponderosa, I'd put the main house right there, overlooking that view. Well, every man to his own view. All right, what's it worth? <laughs> the view? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> including the view. You mean in money? What else? Are well, you suggesting, Mr. Hackett, that you might be interested in buying the Ponderosa? Try me. Name a price. Uh, it isn't for sale. I'm a very determined man. So am I. And there's no chance of you changing your mind. Hmm. <laughs> well, I just couldn't resist giving it another try. <laughs> well, there's no harm in that. <laughs> well, I might as well be on my way now. Joe, I haven't much time. I want you to listen to me. You've got to convince your father to sell this ranch. What are you talking about? Believe me, he will be no match for Charles Hackett, no matter what he thinks. If he doesn't sell this ranch... Well, Mrs. Hackett, your husband offered to buy the ranch. My father doesn't want to sell it. You think my husband sent me here, don't you? All right, then you tell me why you did come. I came because I think you and your family have something good and decent, and I don't want to see my husband destroy it. Oh, I think you're making an awful lot out of nothing. There's no contest here. There's nothing your husband can dream up that'll ever make my father sell this place. What my husband will dream up will be a nightmare for your family. Now, do you honestly expect me to believe with everything your husband owns that he's going to be this upset about not having this ranch? It's not the ranch he wants now, don't you understand? It's the game that counts. The playing of the game. Destroying anyone that stands in his way. That's his pleasure now. Oh, please talk to your father. Tell him to be reasonable. Tell him to give in. Not the way you have? Look, if you feel this way about this man, why did you marry him in the first place? I married him because I loved him. And because I thought him the most wonderful man in the world. He took care of me when my parents died. He sent me to Europe. He educated me. He took good care of me. And when he asked me to marry him, I was flattered and proud. Now, what were you doing the other night? I was being foolish. You see, there's nowhere in the world I can go to get away from Charles Hackett. Mrs. Hackett, there's nobody that powerful. Yes, he is. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't fight him. It costs too much. Believe me, I know. Mrs. Hackett? Yeah. What did she want? Uh, she just came out to tell us that the richest man in the world can have anything he wants in the world, including the Ponderosa. Feet order. Boys are loaded up and you give me the bad news. Good morning. Mr. Mr. Cartwright. Horse, Joe. Uh, boys better start loading up that feed grain. Ben, uh, your uh, order's been canceled. I sold out yesterday. I'm just managing the place now for Mr. Hackett. Why? Because I wouldn't sell you my home. Now, do you really think I could be influenced by a couple of bags of feed grain? Well, you must admit that it is the beginning. 
Come on, Paul. We can get all the grain we want in Carson City. If you're thinking of taking a ride to Carson City, I would uh, save yourself the trip. I bought the feed and grain store there, too. Get ready for dinner. Waiting dinner for you. We got trouble. Hmm? There's no water in the north pasture. Well, that stream never dries up. Didn't dry up. It was cut off. Dammed up just over our property line. There's two men guarding it. Or on Harry Towers' place? They're not Harry Towers' men. They're hired guns. Said that they're to protect the property rights of Charles Augustus Hackett. giving a fancy blowout for the monkey mucks over his hotel. Looking for Harry Towers. Is he around here? Uh, yeah, back there. Stay here. Why? been expecting you, Ben. Why didn't you have the decency to tell me yourself? We had a deal for those water rights before little Joe was born. We've been friends and neighbors. Why did you do this to me? I couldn't help myself. You couldn't help yourself? Do you know that he built a dam and put hired killers around it? I just sold him the land. I couldn't stop him from doing whatever he wants with it. But you knew what he wanted. Look, Ben, he can't hurt you too bad. You can bring water down the sluice from Lake Tahoe. Or move the herd over to the west pasture till this blows over. You have the answers to all my problems, don't you, Harry? What about yours? Ben... Don't make it any tougher on me, please. Tougher on you? Hackett is pushing me against the wall. Now, why did you do this to me? Why? I needed money. You needed money? Why not come to me? I'm your friend. I couldn't. I had to sell. You had to hurt me. Damn that. I... I'm sorry. You're sorry. So am I. Stay here, I'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, your attention, please. I wish to propose a toast to our most gracious host, Charles Augustus Hackett, Virginia City's most important and most welcome visitor. Nor is it every day that we have the pleasure of the finest imported French cookery and the finest French champagne flowing like water. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great civic gratitude that I say, that I say, Come in, Cartwright. Join the festivities. What I have to say is better said in private. Oh. Uh -huh. All right, the party's over. Everybody out. I said the party's over. Get out.
Well, Cartwright? Your fight is with me, Hackett. Keep it that way. Don't try to get at me through my friends. Friends? Like Harry Towers? Like Harry Towers. I don't know how you got him to sell his land to you, but I know it could have been just for the money. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> I thought you were going to accuse me of using that old bromide that money can buy anything. Champagne? But money in the hands of men who know how to use it, that know its power well, that's another thing altogether. Then truly it becomes a weapon that can command anything. Anything. Loyalty and love. And your Ponderosa? My Ponderosa. Now, why would you want that? Why are you so willing to sacrifice Harry Towers in order to get it? Why? Because I decided I wanted it. Well, that's... That's just plain greed. It's a sickness of the mind. Sickness? I've created an empire, Cartwright. An empire that employs thousands of people, that earns profits, not only for me, but for hundreds of others. I build ships and railroads. I strip the earth for lumber and replace its barrenness with factories. I finance innumerable businesses that ply the whole world for trade. I. I dream and create beyond the imagination of most humans. If that's a sickness card right, then more men need to be infected. Out of that sickness depends the greatness of this country. You use words very well, Hackett. But you distort their meaning. We all build empires. Not as big as yours, possibly, but we build them. Perhaps it's only one man raising a family or earning a living. There's one big difference between us. In order to fulfill your ambition, you'd as soon destroy as create. And that's your sickness. And in the end, it'll destroy you. Your opinion, and that of any others, is of no interest to me, Cartwright. I tell you again, I'll win. I'll make that precious Ponderosa cost so much to keep. You'll beg me to take it. I'll... Charles. I don't need your help. Now we know what kind of man he is. What about you? What about this loyalty he commands? Well, once I was rich, as rich as he, and he broke me. And then he picked me up and made me his associate. His associate? What about this love? which he says comes from you. He took me in as an orphan. He raised me, educated me. And married you. For love? Love. Loyalty. Why don't you use the honest words?
you for coming. I got your note. I came as quick as I could. I'm leaving my husband. This time I'm really leaving. I can't stand it anymore. The other day when I told you I was afraid to leave, you said no man was that powerful. I still believe that. Then help me prove it, please. What do you want me to do? Take me to Carson City so I can get the stage east. All right, my buggy's outside. Where do you think you're going, Cartwright? Well? Your wife is leaving you, Mr. Hackett. Leaving? You mean she's running off with you? No, not with me, away from you. I'm just taking her to Carson City so she can take the stage east. You're a liar. You're trying to steal my wife and this isn't the first time. Tell him, Maria. Well, Maria? It's no use, little Joe. I told you we'd never get away with it. I'm sorry. fool out of me. I believed everything she told me. When her husband stopped us, everybody in that town was watching. The whole thing was a plan and she knew it. Well, it wasn't your fault, Joe. Yeah, well, you hear the gossips. I guarantee you by tomorrow, everybody in town will believe Hackett's story. Joe? You know, I think there's a very easy way to deal with the gossips. Uh, tomorrow, you and Hoss ride into town and you act like nothing happened, naturally. Don't let anything upset you. Don't let anybody ride you. And I think that ought to show the gossips, and Mr. Hackett particularly, that you're on to the little scheme. Hmm? Like yeah. that. So everybody can see you're in town, like Paul said. Look, I could have taken care of this whole thing alone. Paul don't trust your temper, and neither do I. Well, look who's in town. What's up, little Joe Cartwright? Well, maybe little Joe's in town to do some more, uh, wife stealing, eh, Luke? <laughs> <laughs> He's a dangerous man to have around. Wives. <laughs> Why don't you keep your mouth shut, Phil? Wait a minute, little Joe. I ain't got no beef with you. See, because uh, I ain't got no wife. <laughs> What'd you go hit him for? Well, what'd you want me to do, let him walk on me? I want you to do just like Pa said and hold your temper. Look, if you don't like it, then why don't you mind your own business? Pa said that... That's right, Pa, not you.
to see Mr. Hackett. About what? It's personal. All right, Davis, let him in. Well? The exact amount you paid for my ranch. And now you want your ranch back. Please. So Cartwright sent you begging. He doesn't know about this. I just want to undo what's been done. And what about you and that little information I have? I'll just have to take my chances. Well, don't be so noble. You're leaving Virginia City, Hackett, one way or another. Now, you put that gun away, and I'll forget you ever pointed it at me. I mean business. I said one way or another. You're there. Get the sheriff. Talk towers out of that gun. Just a moment, young man. Don't add bad manners to your mistake. Oh, what mistakes? Protecting myself against a couple of Hackett's men? I told you this morning before you went into town to restrain yourself, no matter what. Is that correct? Well, how much do I have to take? More than you did. And that goes for you too, Horace. Well, he should have stayed out of it anyway. It was none of his business. All I did was help you end a fight that you shouldn't have started in the first place. I didn't need any help. I think you need help more than you know. Oh, great. Now you're going to get in on it, too, huh? That's right. If you hadn't been running around trying to play Sir Galahad to Mrs. Hackett, you wouldn't have gotten yourself into this mess. Well, the same thing I said to Hoss goes for you. Mind your own business. All right, that's enough. Mr. Hackett just loved to hear this argument. He's just hoping we have more and more of them until finally we can't even stand the sight of each other. Or the sight of this house. What is the Ponderosa? It's not just a, a house. Or a ranch, or land, or trees. It's us working together, living together, respecting each other. This bickering makes the whole thing worthless to us. And that's exactly what Mr. Hackett hopes it will become. Worthless.
was trying to get Hackett to leave town. I only meant to scare him into going, but Davis jumped me, and the gun went off by accident. I didn't mean to kill him, Ben. I want you to know that. I was trying to undo the damage to you. Take it easy. No, no, Ben. You were right. I didn't turn over my ranch to Hackett just for the money. He was blackmailing me. Something he dug up way back, just before I came here. Down in Arizona Territory, I was wanted for horse stealing. Harry, we're, we're not here to sit in judgment on you. Just want to help you as much as we can. It won't be easy, Ben. Hackett's put a price on my head. $5,000, dead or alive. Well, Hackett's not the law. $5,000? Who's gonna ask about the law? Settle up my horse. Yes, sir. Better stay here with him. We'll send out a doctor as soon as we get into town. I've made all the arrangements. We'll bury Carl in the morning. You don't even know what guilt is, do you? Guilt? Carl died for you and because of you. Well, that was his choice, not mine. And you're capitalizing on his death. At least he didn't die entirely in vain. Even after years of knowing you, I can't believe the way you think. You put a price on everything, even human life, and a value on nothing. Why did you ever marry me? I married you because I thought you needed me. Because I'd needed you most of my life. I was ready to love you with every fiber of my being. Look, Maria, you have to face reality. You can't constantly whine about needed and loved. Life is strength and purpose. What purpose? To live alone? If necessary. At least I give you the chance to live on my side. The side that doesn't have to sacrifice for anybody. Oh, if only you'd understand that. What a beautiful life we'd live together. What do you want? I just left a dead man at my house. Harry Towers. And I'm holding you responsible for his death and for the death of Carl Davis. What do I want? I came here to kill you. Oh, did you? Yes. But killing is your way of doing things, isn't it? If you want the Ponderosa, you're gonna have to kill me to get it. Don't be a fool, Cartwright. If I wanted to play it that way, I would have doubled the men and doubled the guns. Well, I'm sure you could get ten times the men and ten times the guns, and you'll need them all, because we'll be waiting for you. If you're going to be stupid as well as stubborn, then I'm going to wipe you out, Cartwright. I'm not wait. What's the matter with him? I don't know. What's the matter? The pills. The draw. Pedro. What pills? Get him. I don't know what he means.
Find any pills in there. Maria, the pills. What pills? Maria. I don't know what you mean, Charles. I didn't even know you had this weakness. Maria, please. Help me. I better get the doctor. No, wait. Say it again. Help me. One will be enough. I wanted him to die. For my sake and for yours. And everyone he would hurt in the future. But I couldn't let him. He hadn't corrupted me enough. I guess I'm in your debt card, right? Well, I didn't give you these pills, your wife did. She took them away in the first place. Yeah, but she gave them to you when you needed them. In fact, she gave you something you couldn't buy. Your life. That's because she's weak. As you are. I figured she gave them to you because she loved you. Even though she might not know it. Must be awfully lonely. When you get those attacks of yours, to have to depend only on some pills. You know, Hackett, for a man who's accomplished so much, you've missed the most important thing of all. Behind that door. If you're big enough to admit it. Hey, Pa, where you been? We've been looking all over for you. Oh, I uh, just dropped by here on the way home. You know, Hackett was wrong about that, too. What are you, what are you talking about? Well, we, we were by here the other morning. He said that would have been a much better place to build a house. It's a terrible place yeah, for a house. But, Papa, that's where we were trying to find you. Hackett left town with Maria. Yes, I know. You know? Well, yeah. what happened? Yeah, you know, that Hackett. He's a much richer man than even he thought he was. Bigger man, too. Bigger man. Well, I'll tell you about it on the way home. Yeah, well...
me, Roy. Doggone it. I was going through the mail here. It wasn't paying. That's all right, Hoss. I ain't got no time for no chit chat, though. What's the matter? You got trouble? Not if I find him first, and there's his rig. Who's rig? That Lothario Larkin is back in town. Lothario Larkin? Well, I'll be doggone. I would have figured old Lothario could have ever afforded a rig like this. Gonna mean I see that coot again. The only place you're gonna see him is in my jail, when I find him. Oh, now, Roy, there ain't nothing wrong with Lothario. He's a pretty nice fella. He's just maybe a little too friendly. <laughs> I told him the last time I threw him out of town, when he comes back, it's going to be to a nice, safe jail cell. You got any idea where he's at? Well... <laughs> Does that answer your question? Come on. See that, Roy? Picking that stuff up? He's changed. You want to bet? Ladies, now that everything is peaceful and quiet, will you join me at the bar? <laughs> you haven't oh. changed a bit! <laughs> Hi there, Lothario. <laughs> oh, bigger and prettier than ever, Hoss. Well, uh, thank you, Lothario. You look pretty good yourself. Uh, you're right prosperous like. Oh, I am. I got me a little gold mine over in California. As a matter of fact, uh, I've been doing so good, I decided to come over here and take a little vacation and uh, hmm, renew old friendships. <laughs> Mr. Larkin, the only old friendships you're going to renew is through the bars in one of my jail cells. Now, I told you last time you was here, you come back, I'd throw you in jail. Oh, Roy. All right, then I'll give him his choice. In the jail or out of the town, one. Uh, too bad, Hoss. Their gentleman friends decide to leave very suddenly, and we, we could have had ourselves a nice party. <laughs> no, thank you, Lothario. Oh, Hoss, that reminds me. I owe you something. You remember the last time Roy throwed me out of town? You staked me? Oh, you don't have to do that, Lothario. No, I want to give it back to you. I'm rich. Besides, I owe you a lot more than money, Hoss. Lothario. Time is a-wasting. Well, you ladies might just as well spend this yourselves. Looks like I'm leaving. Oh, but, Lothario, you just got here. But like he said, he's just leaving. Now, come on. Oh, oh. means I got to take another long ride. And I hurt my back coming in yesterday in this tussle, and... Hoss, can you see anything? I'm... It feels like a muscle spasm or something. If it's a muscle spasm, you need some liniment on it. Uh -huh. hey. You know, if you could make it out to the Bonderosa, you could spend the night tonight and then get a fresh start in the morning. Oh. Oh, Hoss, that sounds just wonderful. I, I'd get to see your pa again and the brothers, and and it wouldn't make my trip seem near so wasted. Yeah, well, what about it, Roy? So long as he's out of Virginia City. <laughs> oh, Hoss, uh, I, I just remembered there's uh, something I got to pick up before I go out, so... Why don't you go ahead, and then I'll come out later, all right? Roy? All right. Do what you have to do, but be on your way in a half hour, you hear? I promise, Sheriff. I promise. It's him, isn't it? It's really him. What's the matter, Laura? Does he bring back regrets? No, but let's get away from here. I. money in the action is here, we stay just as long as it's profitable. And Laura. Don't get any ideas. For his sake, understand?
Ross, how could you do it? How could you do it? How could you let Lothario loose in Virginia City again? Paul, he gave me his word of honor that he was going to stay out of trouble. Now, he just wanted to pick up something, that's all. Oh, she's like an old cougar. A cougar's got no honor. Look, maybe something happened to him. Yeah. Yeah, something nice. Something romantic. Little brother, you got a mighty suspicious mind. Yeah, when it comes to Lothario, you bet I do. Look, uh... I, I better get started. Adam's gonna be looking for me. Be back in a couple of days when we have all those wild horses hobbled. You just sit right down again, young man. We're gonna need you more than Adam does. We're gonna be mighty unpopular people around here unless we can keep that Lothario hobbled. Hey! We're here! Start hobbling. He wasn't lying. He picked up some. Oh, no. It's Meg Jones. Her old man will kill him. Ah, uh, Ben. Ontario. <laughs> Joe, hey, it's Ontario. good to see Hi, you, Meg. fellas. Oh, it seems like it's been a million years, huh? Yeah, well, it seems just like yesterday to me, Lothario. I hope we ain't late for dinner. We're hungrier than a whale in a minute pond. Oh, Ben, I, uh, I brought a beautiful rose to decorate your dinner table. Yeah, you sure did, Lothario. Uh, excuse me, mm -hmm. excuse me. Uh, Meg? Does your, does your pa know that you're out buggy riding with Lothario? No, but he can't stop me. I'm of age. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I guess you are, um... I think it might be best if Horse was to take you home what? right now, young lady. No. Oh, wait a minute, Ben. What? What, what are you talking about? This is kind of discourteous, I said. Discourteous, rude, and uncivilized. Lothario? Oh, no, Ben, now wait. No. My goodness gracious. Now, come on now. All I can say is you cartwrights are mighty high-handed. <laughs> Now, Meg, you ain't got no call to be said that burn sore at me. It's just like Paul said. You ain't got no business running around with a man like Lothario Larkin, no Al. Why, he's broke more hearts than half. Why, you sanctimonious bag of wind, why don't you shut up? Yeah, just figuring on doing that. You! Uh, oh, hi, Abner. Sure is pretty day, eh? I always suspicioned you, Hollis. I always did. For what? For trying to lure my poor little girl out alone somewhere, unescorted and unchaperoned. Sneak! Now, Abner, Abner, that, that just ain't so. What? I was just bringing her home. From where? From my house. You see? You see? But Abner, Abner, my pa and little Joe and everybody was there. Pa, will you stop acting so silly? It wasn't Hoss. I wouldn't go out with him. Hoss was just sticking his big fat nose into someone's business. He shouldn't have. Well, if it wasn't Hoss, who was it? Well, Mr. Larkin. Lothario Larkin? You listen to me, Hoss. If that friend of yours comes within 10 miles of my daughter, I'll blow his head out of the county. You hear? You hear? You hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I hear. I hear. I hear, Abner. Yeah. All right, all right. You get down out of that surrey. I have never been so humiliated in all my born days. I am of age. I'll decide that. You get down here. And you, you remember what I said. <laughs> I'll, I'll, rem I'll remember, Abner, every word. I swear I will. Every word. Yeah. Get up, get up. Oh, oh Ben. <laughs> I tell you, there, there ain't no one in this whole wide world can fry up a mess of vittles like that hop sing. Beautiful. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll be very delighted when I tell him what you said. Lothario? Mm -hmm. How long are you uh, planning on staying around this time? Hmm. Just till the eh, till the edge sort of wears off, you know. Uh, just how sharp is the edge this time? No, well, sorry. I'm, I'm going to have to give you a fair warning. If you go fooling around Virginia City again, I guarantee you we're going to have to cut you down for one of those cottonwood trees. Fooling around, Ben? Yep. Oh, Ben. 
fooling around. Well, what would you call it? Well, I'd, I'd call it just being nice to people. You know, uh, being good to folks, uh, practicing the golden rule. Uh, sort of being unto others like you'd uh, have them be unto you. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Lothario. Now, you listen to me. There are folks right here in Virginia City who'd laugh all the way to Boot Hill the day they buried you. Mike Gillis, for one. Why, he swears he'll tear you apart with his bare hands for leaving his Nancy, crying her eyes out of the church. Nancy. <laughs> oh, she was a mighty pretty little girl. Took things too much for granted, though. I, I did feel sorry about that. I, I think I'll just mosey on over there. Now, you ain't gonna mosey nowhere. Lothario, I want some words with you. Oh, Hoss. <laughs> Come on in, Hoss. You must be hungry. No, I ain't hungry. But I'm mad enough to eat nails, that's what I am. Oh, who peeved you, Hoss? You. You peeved me. You dang near got me killed. That's what you done. Well, what happened? Like that Abner Jones like to blew me in half with that shotgun of his. That's what he done. <laughs> he, he thought you were, were Spark and Mac. He thought and he was... what's so that burn funny? Uh, uh, <laughs> there's nothing funny. There's nothing funny. I think you and Meg are going to be very happy. Joseph, one of these days, I'm... Don't fret yourself, Nen Hoss. I'll just amble on over there and explain it to the old fella. <laughs> no, Lothario, no, no, I don't want you to do that. As a matter of fact, I don't want you to set foot off of this Ponderosa. Now, I don't want to seem unhospitable, but I don't even want you going into Virginia City. Do you understand that? Not even on Saturday night? Especially not on Saturday nights. I can feel that, that Ed's starting to get duller already. You, you fellas, you don't like me around here, I guess. I, I might just as well pull on out of here in the morning. Now, now wait a minute, Lothario. We, we didn't mean that. Now, quit talking like that. Sure we like you, and we want you to stay here as long as you like. I mean, you're, you're welcome here. <laughs> oh, well, now, that, that's more like it, Hoss. That's that old Cartwright hospitality that's famous all over the territory. Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, Ben, I'm telling you, you've done an elegant job bringing up this big boy of yours. <laughs> yeah, didn't I? Oh, mm. I had a pretty long day. I guess I'd better turn in. Uh, I might sleep in a little in the morning. Why has I married? Sing sort of pretty. Uh, I was just tuning up your guitar, Hoss. Ah, uh, hey, mind. It's it's my brother Adams, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Anything on your mind? No, no, not particular. I just heard you down here singing. It sort of sounded sort of sort of lonesome like. Uh, I expect just sitting here in front of the fire looking at it make most anybody lonesome. Yeah. Sorry, you reckon I'm a Close enough, friend, to ask a couple of personal questions? I reckon. Well, Lothario, what makes you tick anyhow? I mean, all the drinking and fighting and carousing around with the women folk and getting in all sorts of trouble. I do got a knack, huh? <laughs> yeah. But the question is, is why do you do it? Well, 
I guess it's just my nature to love, Hoss. Uh, of course, when a fellow's fixing to do a little loving, he's got to be prepared to do a little fighting, too. Yeah, but a fellow can't love all of them gals. I mean, that just ain't natural. It ain't. Well, no, I mean, that's just like, a, like an old cougar. Faithful to nobody and not an ounce of real love in him, not an ounce. Well, leastwise, when a cougar does go, he, he don't leave no tears, no sadness behind him. Leastwise, like that old cat, you're always running and chasing, ain't you? Lothario, are you chasing after something, or are you running away from something? Is there a Laura Lee? No, oh, maybe. Long time. A lot of miles ago. Something, something happened to her? Something happened to her, all right. Run into a fancy-talking fella, and he filled her with a pack of sweet talk and big lies, and she run off with him. I ain't never seen her since. So that's it. That's why you're playing the cougar game. You're gonna get back at all the women folk, ain't you? Oh, no, Hoss, that ain't it. Uh, that ain't it at all. It's just that I, well, I, I keep hoping and hoping that, that maybe someday, in some way, I might run into that same kind of love again. Leastwise, a fella's gotta keep trying, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon he has. Well, good night, old cougar. Good night, Hoss. Hey, did you hear that Lothario singing last night? Yeah, he sings pretty good, isn't yeah, he? I was surprised. What do we have to do today? Hey, Paul! Well, I don't know. Paul? He's gone. He's gone, Adam's guitar and all. God burn his ornery hide. It's all my fault for calling him a cougar. Started him thinking all over again. I want you to go out there, I want you to find him, and I want you to bring him back if you have to drag him every inch of the way. And tomorrow, we escort him to Carson City personally. Right. It ain't gonna be easy, Paul. He could be anywhere in the territory. It's for sure he ain't gonna go back to Virginia City and run the risk of getting arrested by Roy. Well, no. you just find him. All right, you go out and help find him. Me? You. Here. Come on, yes, Joe, we sir. gotta hurry. That's dang Lothario can get in more trouble accidentally than most folks can on purpose. Come All right, on. hurry up, hurry up. Him and his friends. Him yes. and his friends. All right, go ahead. Go up with it. That was beautiful. Thank you, ma'am. Why did you run away? When you left me, standing in the church, something went out of me. Something warm and beautiful. How could you have done it? How could you? I've been whooping myself ever since, ma'am. Have you, Lothario? Have you? Why did you do it? Uh, that's what I come back for, was, was to explain what happened. What did happen? Uh, I got thinking that a, a fellow like me just ain't good enough for a beautiful girl like you. Well, that's not true. Why, you... Nancy! <sighs> Nancy! It's Pa! Help me down, quick! Nancy! You. I gotta get going. I'll explain later. Oh, no, no, if you touch one hair on Lothario's head, I'll never speak to you again. I ain't gonna touch a hair on his head. I'm gonna break every bone in his back. What you do, I'll, I'll hold my breath. I'll hold my breath forever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
take that side of the street over there and I'll take this side. Well, we've been looking for that cougar all day. Well, this is the last place to look. I never figured he'd be fool enough to come into here. It's the last place we can look. You look yourself. I'm gonna go home. I'm tired. I'll raise a hundred. Lothario! <laughs> Put that bottle right up here, Barky. Come on, belly up to the bar, ladies. I got me a thirst bigger than a bale of smoked oysters. <laughs> Hurry up with that. Pour it now. Excuse me, I'm very tired. Now, don't you forget, the past is dead. Or he is. Do you understand? Where have you been? Oh, you know, around <laughs> here and there. <laughs> Lothario! Hoss, compadre! <laughs> Don't you compadre me. Now, Dad Bernard, I'm sore. How come you to run off, anyhow? Hoss, oh, simmer down, simmer down. Have a drink. Here, here. here. I, I don't want no drink. Well, all right, then. <laughs> Check me out. I, I'm going to bed. Hoss, you know, them four walls of yours, well, they just kept closing in on me like a cage they was. It, it was almost like a jail. It sort of cramped my style. A, a fella like me's got the... A fe... Ma'am? Oh, no. No, no, Lothario. That's a married woman. Now, come on. If the sheriff gets you here, you're in trouble. It's an old friend, Hoss. This is different. Ma'am? Ma'am? If it's poker you want, I'm through for the evening. Well, I don't want any poker. Come on, Lothario, you just won't get in trouble. Then what do you want? Is your name Laura? Who are you? Larkin. Lothario Larkin. <laughs> you must be joking. Oh, I ain't joking. And all this time I've been looking forward to meeting you. The great lover, the, the legend of the hinterland. Well, let me give you a piece of advice, mister. Stay out here in the country. You ever get near a civilized woman, she'd laugh at you. Because you're really very funny, Mr. Larkin. Uh, I... I ain't trying to be funny. I just want to talk to you. We have nothing to talk about. And, uh, a word to the wise, Mr. Larkin. Don't try to step up in class. Stay with your saloon girls. They'll talk to anyone with the price of a drink. Good night. You heard what the lady said? <laughs> well, there you are, Larkin. mistake when she named him that. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. <laughs> An old friend, huh? Old friends like that you don't need. Let me tell you something. You've been lucky. Gal's been treating me like that all my life. Ain't made me feel no worse. Come on, let's go home. Get on your feet, Larkin. Now, Mike, wait a minute. He ain't doing nothing except sitting here and having a nice, peaceful drink. Oh, he ain't, ain't he? I caught him out behind the barn this morning, a-courting my daughter. Lothario, you didn't. Yeah, he did. And a couple hours later, he was sparking my daughter. And you know it, Hoss. Now, wait a minute, fellas. There ain't no cause to make a ruckus. Lothario, he, he ain't feeling too good, no how. Well, he's gonna feel a whole lot worse. Fellas! <laughs> fellas! Wait! Come on, Lothario. There ain't but two of them. Fight back! Come on, baby. Throw those old guys out of here and let's get a little party going. <laughs> Come on, Lothario. What's the matter? Are you too tired to fight? Fellers! Dad, burn it. 
Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Snap, burn it. You can see he ain't fighting back. What do you want to do, kill him? That's the idea. All right, Mike, you're going to have to come through me. Wait a minute, Abner. Wait a minute, Abner. Now, wait a minute. Burn it. I'm going to have to hit you, Abner. If you want me to hit you, I'm going to hit you. Well, if this ain't a heartwarming little tableau, if I ever did see one. Looks like you gentlemen nuts to have a little difference of opinion. And we can straighten that out all over to my place. Come on, you all know where the jail is. Come on, Abner. Oh, I'm surprised at you. When the leading citizens of this town. Mike, I'm surprised at you. And Horse Cartwright. If your pa could only see you now. Come on, you ain't no exception. Don't give me that but face, Ben and Binnis. Go on. You know where it is. And Mr. Locke, you always do seem to brighten up this little old dull town of ours. Now get. And Lothario, you forgot your guitar. His guitar. Man that lives as dangerous as he does ought to take up the harp. I hope you gentlemen slept good. That'll be twenty-five now. Twenty-five? Well, it was worth it. Was it worth it to you, Mike? You're a bandit, Coffee. You! Get out of town before you get yourself killed. Abner, you want to try for the fifty dollars? It might be worth that, too. Uh, come on, Mike. Don't worry, none. Paul will be here after a while to bail us out. I took a good look at myself last night. Does a fellow good to see himself the way he really is sometimes? <laughs> Funny old clown, scarecrow, flopping around, making empty sounds in the wind. <sighs> Tell me something, Hoss. How can a fellow as, as ugly as me fool himself for so long? Oh, dead bird. Thorio, you ain't ugly. You ain't no scarecrow or no clown, neither. That, that woman over there at the saloon, that Laura, that gambling woman, she ain't nothing. She ain't nothing but a tin horn. Don't you say that, Hoss. Don't you never say that. But Thorio, I... Man? I... Well, you boys certainly covered yourselves with glory, didn't you? How much, Roy? Twenty-five dollars a head. Twenty-five. Well, it may seem a mite high, but we're limited on space. Here's your fifty. All right, Hoss. Congratulations. You too, Lothario. I ain't going. You give me thirty days, and I'm going to sit right here and serve him. What's the matter with him? He ain't been himself, Paul. Come on, Lothario. We'll, we'll go get us some breakfast, and then you'll feel a heap better. Come on. No, sir. I know my rights. I'm going to stay right here. Now, you give me any more trouble, and I'll give you 60 days. Thank you, Sheriff. Well, he's not going to give you any trouble staying in there. You want a bed? Look, Lothario, your fine has been paid. Any time you want to leave, you're free to leave. Come on, Hoss. Yes, sir. What happened? Oh, he's been like that ever since he had that run-in with that Laura over there at the Sazerac. Man, she lit into him something fierce. Yeah, well, anybody plays around as much as that Lothari does is bound to get chewed out once in a while. Oh, I got a feeling this is different. I got a notion that this is the same Laura he loved. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's none of our business. Look, I'm going to get me a shave and a haircut. You coming? No, Paul, wait a minute. If it is the same Laura, and they did once know each other, and sort of liked each other. Oh, she's a married woman, isn't she? Well, yeah, You but... know she is. When it comes to men and women folk, it's a wise man that doesn't stick his nose where it doesn't belong. Yeah. Anyhow, I'd like to know if that's the same Laura he sings about in that song. Uh -huh. See you. It broke my heart the way she ripped into him, Hoss. Yeah. Hey, look, Francine. You being a woman, maybe you could tell me why. 
Why'd she light into him so anyhow? Well, there's two reasons that'll make a woman cut up a man pretty bad, Hoss. She either hates him or she loves him and can't have him. And something tells me she don't hate him. Yeah, me too. That burned if, if she just wasn't married. She ain't. She ain't? She ain't married? How do you know that? Well, like you say, Hoss, me being a woman, I'm nosy. And it kind of bothered me when I saw she was living in one room and he was living in another. So I asked her. Francine, I, I just love a nosy gal. Excuse me. A fella could get in a lot of trouble sticking his nose where it don't belong. Yeah, Paul told me that. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what Paul told me. Come in. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. It's all right. Come in. What do you want? I want to. I want to talk to you about a about a mutual friend of ours, Lothario Larkin. That that clown who was here last night. Ma'am, he uh, he ain't no clown, and you know it. He's very much in love with you. You out of your mind. I never saw the man before last night. Ever since you ran away from him, he's been searching for you. You or somebody like you. Grieving his heart out. Will you get out of here? Not until you promise you'll come over and tell him that you didn't mean all those things you said to him the other night. I mean the whole world to him. I told you I never saw the man before. Now get out of here and leave me alone. Yes, ma'am. I reckon I did make a mistake at that. I'm sorry to have been any bother to you, ma'am. And I'm sorry you're not that other Laura, too. I'm sorry for both of you. I'm sorry, too. That's the girl he's looking for, Hoss. She died a long time ago. What you're looking at now is just a cheap imitation. I'm... I'm leaving today, Hoss. Just tell him he made a mistake. No, ma'am. You're the one that's making a mistake, Laura. Not him. The girl in this picture is still very much alive. All you got to do is wash some of that paint off your face and put on a nice, simple dress like this one. You wouldn't be a bit different than you were when you were both together. Come on. Like I said, I'll be waiting for you downstairs. If you know what's good for you, you'll get out of town and keep going, Hoss. Found you in my wife's bedroom. That's legal grounds for killing, Hoss. That's right. If she were really your wife. The man's got a point. Ma'am, I'll see you down. <clears throat> like I said, ma'am, I'll meet you downstairs. Kill him, so help me, I'll kill him. You'll have no cause to kill anyone, Johnny. We're going away today, together. Hi, Roy. 
Hey, I'm sorry. Come on. Come on. She still loves you. I know she does. Now, you got to tell her right now because she's leaving town. This is your last chance. Come I on. don't feel nothing. Come on. Come on here. No. Hey, Sheriff. This brother's trying to bust me out of jail. That's against the law, ain't it? Oh, for gosh sakes, Roy, will you tell him? Oh, sorry. Well, didn't you hear me? I heard you, Hoss. All the hard-headed, can taker, stubborn jackasses I ever run into in my life. You take the blue ribbon. All right. All right. Fine, Sheriff, you turned out to be. You can't even bust a man out of your own jail. I heard you, Hoss. I heard you. I want you to go over to the preacher's house. Get him. There's going to be a wedding. Lothario is going to get married. Oh, Paul. I said, I'm getting him. Lothario's getting married? Yep. It's going to be a church wedding. Get the preacher. A hurry. church wedding? Ain't that nice? Hey, Dave, Dave, hurry up and finish me up here. Been over to see him, haven't you? No, I. I didn't see him. You're a liar. <coughs> I told you I didn't see him. I said I want the truth. All right, Johnny, I've had about all of you I'm going to put up with. Hadn't been for you, there wouldn't have been no trouble in the first place. Now, you get out of here before I break you in half. Get. Look out, horse. Johnny, you had enough?
Let's go. No, I... I don't want to see him. Ma'am. Oh! oh, come on. Let me out of here. Please let me out. I want out! Uh, Roy, what do you say, me and you step outside where it's a little more peaceful and quiet, huh? I huh? want out! Oh, yeah, it is kind of noisy in there, isn't it? Yeah. Please let me out. What did you do that they throwed you in here? I didn't do anything. That, that big lump just picked me up and... Oh, horse. Oh, you're wondering about the door. They wouldn't lock me up. Don't you worry. I'll, I'll get them to let you right out. You haven't changed a bit, Lothario. Oh, I expect not. Same funny old clown, funny old lover. I didn't mean those things. You didn't? Mm. You look tired. Well, it's been a lot of years, a lot of miles. And a lot of women. <sighs> if, um... You don't mind my saying so, ma'am. You're, you're more beautiful than ever. It's, it's time you knew the truth about me, so you can be rid of me once and for all. I, I, I'm not at all the girl you knew a long time ago. There've been too many towns, too many saloons, too many back rooms. Never a wedding. You mean you ain't never been married? I'm leaving today, Lothario. Now that you know, you can forget all about that girl you once loved. Oh, no, ma'am. You, you was right about one thing. You ain't nothing like that little girl. She didn't know nothing about living or loving or sharing. She was just a little girl. But you're a grown-up woman. I love that little girl, but I could just worship that woman if she let me. Don't you see? We're we're sort of like two peas in a pod, you and me. We we've done about everything there is to do, and we've been about every place there is to go, except home. married you? Excuse me, ma'am. Hey, Lothario, I've got the print. Isn't he the gentleman that I... Oh, hush, I found the print. Stand up! Because I'm coming to you. According to the powers vested in me, I do hereby declare my intentions of joining these two together in the holy bonds of matrimony. If anyone objects, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Well, I do. You shut up!
Go ahead, Reverend. Do you, Laura, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. And do you, Lothario, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? Yes, I do. Uh, ring. So be it. I do hereby pronounce you man and wife. So, compadre, I'll be seeing you. Yeah, well, uh, don't rush. Don't rush, Lothario. You just have a nice honeymoon. All right. So long, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Good time. The end of an era, Haas. That's what it is. Yep. And the end of a cougar, huh, Paul? <laughs> you know, we're going to miss that little fella. Yeah, well, you come along with me, Cupid, because the champagne's on you. All right.